This is a 2021 Jaguar F-Type R, and it's pretty impressive. This car has a supercharged V8 with 575 horsepower and a sticker price of around $110,000. The F-Type has always been cool, but it's just been updated for the 2021 model year. And today I'm going to review the new top of the line F-Type R. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my new online enthusiast car auction website for modern enthusiast cars. If you're looking for a cool car from the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to find it. We have amazing variety and some incredible cars with auctions running at all times. If you're looking to sell a cool car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place you will get the most money and the most interest in your cool car. So check out Cars and Bids at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this F-Type R from Hohen Motors Jaguar Land Rover Carlsbad, which is my local Jaguar dealership here in the San Diego area. Hohen Motors has all of the latest Jaguar Land Rover models, of course, including the new F-Type and the F-Type R, which has just started arriving at dealerships. You can check out Hohen Motors Jaguar Land Rover Carlsbad by clicking the link in the description below. So let's talk newly revised F-Type. The F-Type first went on sale for the 2014 model year as the sportiest member of Jaguar's lineup. Now, it went through some revisions over the years. It got a coupe model and performance models, and there was eventually a manual transmission. But the biggest change has come for the 2021 model year. The F-Type has been restyled. It looks different, and the lineup has been pared down for more simplicity. The new lineup offers a choice between three engines. You can get a turbo four-cylinder with about 300 horsepower or a supercharged V6 with about 380 horsepower or you can step up to the top of the line, this, the F-Type R. This car has a five-liter supercharged V8 with 575 horsepower. All-wheel drive is standard and it'll do zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds. Like other F-Type models with the R, you can choose between a coupe or a convertible body style, and like I said, this one has a sticker price of around $110,000. And today, I'm going to review it. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of this F-Type R and show you all of the interesting quirks and features of the top Jaguar performance car. Then, I'm going to take it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the latest F-Type by discussing a few of the things that are different for 2021. The biggest difference is undoubtedly the styling, and specifically the front-end styling. You can clearly tell this is not the same F-Type as before. You have these narrower headlights that give it kind of a sharper, more focused, almost Aston Martin-like look up here. It looks cool, very aggressive, just like you'd expect from Jaguar's sportiest vehicle. And next up, we move under the hood in the F-Type R, because one of the other big differences for 2021 is that this car's lineup has been just made simpler. Last year, and in previous F-Type models, there were two high-performance versions. You could get the F-Type R with 550 horsepower, or you could get the F-Type SVR with 575 horsepower. So if you went all the way and spent all the money for the F-Type R, you still didn't have the best model. It was all confusing, too complex, so now there's basically three trim levels corresponding to the three engines. Turbocharged four-cylinder, supercharged V6, and then the F-Type R, the top-of-the-range performance model. Like I said, 575 horsepower and about 520 pound-feet of torque. It is a monstrous engine, especially for such a relatively small car. And it sounds pretty good. This car has quad exhaust in the back, which is fantastic, and they make an amazing sound when you're really going for it. Take a listen to this car revving. And 
next up we climb into the F type R but before we do I want to talk door handles right now you walk up to the car you can see the door handle is flat so it might seem a little confusing about how you open it but if you have the key on you in your pocket whatever you can just tap the front of the door handle and it pops open and then the rest of it can be pulled and the door can be opened take a look at that again you just tap the front pops open and you pull it now the thing I like is that when you pop the door handle open the top part is revealed to say Jaguar just another reminder of the cool car you're getting into now when you want to lock the doors you can just tap the back of the door handle and then the doors lock and the door handle goes back into its home as you can see take another look at that just tap the back and the door handle goes back in flush with the car this is a cool door handle design for a cool car and you don't have to do it all by tapping the door handle either if you have the keyless remote just press the unlock button and the door handle pops out or press the lock button and the door handle goes back into its home and that's how you know the f type is locked but for now we climb inside now there are quite a few interesting quirks and features in this interior but by far the coolest is the climate vents in the center okay you look right now and there are no climate vents in the center only on the side so where does air come from well you turn on the f-type and the climate vents rise out of the top of the dashboard to provide you with air from the climate control system that is a pretty cool feature and it also means that if you have the climate control turned off they go right right back into their home and it gives the dashboard kind of a cleaner look. I think that's very neat and I think more cars should do that, try to hide the climate control vents when not in use for a cleaner look, but it's challenging to do. They've done it in the F-Type. Now when the climate control vents are up, you can see that the little switches that allow you to position the air say Jaguar on them. Jaguar never seems to miss an opportunity for branding. They know they don't have the brand name strength of a Porsche or even a Mercedes Benz in this segment, so they put it everywhere, those switches, but also how about the glove box opener instead of just a little button it's a button rimmed with Jaguar established 1935 because you always want to know the year your car company was established when you're opening your glove box interesting but anyway more interesting quirks and features there are some interesting buttons and switches in this center console area one of them adjusts the drive mode you can see there's like a little lever to the left of the gear selector if you push it up that puts you into snow and rain drive mode if you push it down that puts you into like race or competitive drive mode and if you press either of those a second time it'll just put you back into normal but it's weird to see this like switch or lever that you can push up or pull down to enter the different drive modes. I don't think I've ever seen that in any other car before. Stranger than that, however, is the gear selector. It looks just like a fairly standard modern car electronic gear selector. You pull it down to put the car in drive, you push it up to put it in reverse, and it always stays in the same position no matter what gear you're in, which is pretty common. Except if you go into S for sport and you can shift gears yourself, then it switches over to the left. Now, this presents a little bit of a problem for Jaguar because what happens if you're driving the car in sport mode but then you want to park it how do you make sure the gear lever goes back to the middle where it will need to be when you start it up again to go back into gear the answer is it does it automatically you're in sport you press P and the gear lever moves over as if a ghost has put it back into the center where the gear lever needs to live very strange watch that again you're in sport you press park and then the gear lever moves itself over over the whole assembly to go back into its neutral position. Kind of a strange thing, but I guess they had to do that here to make it work with how they wanted the gear lever to operate. And next up, some more interesting quirks and features in this area. Going to the climate controls, you have three dials like you do in a lot of cars. The middle one lets you change the fan speed, the one on the sides lets you change the temperature. No big deal there. The interesting part is that if you push one of the temperature dials, that becomes your heated seat control and your cooled seat. You can then twist it to turn on your heated seat or your cooled seat. Push it again and you go back to adjusting your climate control temperature. This is a pretty nifty way to integrate heated seat controls without having to put an extra button
buttons somewhere in here and make it look cluttered. You just make it part of the climate control dial that already exists. That is pretty smart thinking. I like that. And next up, a few other interesting controls in this area. One of them is the hazard light button, which isn't actually a button. In fact, it's rather a switch and a fairly large one. You push it down to turn them on and back down again to turn them off. And it's rather satisfying to do that. Also in this vicinity, you have a few other controls, one of which is the exhaust. You press this little button and that turns on the sport exhaust system, which is what you heard earlier. And this car has quite a sound with the V8 and with that sport exhaust on. The button right below that shows the back of a car with a couple of arrows that will raise or lower the rear wing. You press that, the wing goes up, you press it again and the wing goes down. The wing also goes up automatically at a certain speed, but you can put it up with the press of a button if you simply want everyone to look at you and know that you're cool because your car has a wing. The other button switch in here is the one for the power convertible top. Obviously, a car with a roof off and arrows is very clear what this does. But since you always seem to enjoy watching tops go up and down, well, here you go. And next up, a few other notable quirks and features in here. One is the sun visors, which are just unbelievably tiny and thin. You put them down and they're like three inches. But I guess it's a small car with a low windshield, so you don't really need a lot of sun visor. Another interesting F-type interior detail I've always liked with this car is that the passenger has handles. You have one on the passenger side of the center control stack. And then of course you have another one in the door panel. And so the passenger has two places to grab onto in case the F-type ride just gets a little bit too crazy. You see that in a lot of off-roaders where you'll be bouncing around off-road. Not as common in sports cars, but I do love the two handles so you can sit here grabbing on for your life in case things are going fast. And next up, we move on to another change of the newer F-types, and that would be the driver's gauge cluster. You no longer have any sort of old school gauges. Instead, it's all a screen in here, which is more modern. More cars are going to it. It's nice to see it in the F-type. One interesting detail, the default screen is a picture of the F-type. So you can look at the car you're driving while you're driving it. But it is a beautiful car, so you might want to, in fact, do that. With that said, you you can go through various other screens in here. I've shown this off in other Land Rover models. Land Rover and Jaguar have the same parent company, so they use the same technology. I'll link those in the description below if you want a more thorough tour of this gauge cluster screen. With that said, two notable quirks in here that I do want to cover. One is a feature called Last Alarm. If you go deep into the menus in here, you can find something marked Last Alarm. You click on it, and it tells you what the last alarm was in the car, the last thing that beeped to notify you. So in case you're driving along and you thought, you know, something was beeping at me this morning that I forgot what it was. Well, you can check and it will tell you even if it's no longer a problem anymore, which is kind of interesting. Another interesting quirk in here, something I love, is the blue lines that appear on the tachometer and the speedometer when they're higher up. You can see like below where the needle is, is blue, and it just looks really cool for both the tach and the speedo. I really, really like that look, and it helps you figure out exactly where you are in these digital gauges, but the blue is just a nice touch. Now, speaking of this gauge cluster, one other interesting item is right above it, this little shroud over the gauge cluster, standard in basically every car. The strange part is the material on top of the shroud. It's this odd Alcantara, almost looks like mesh, a very strange material that appears nowhere else in this entire interior. And I suspect it's there for glare. If they had put the regular leather in that spot, it would reflect under the windshield under direct sunlight. But this material isn't as reflective, and so that's why it's sitting up there. Just kind of an interesting detail. And finally, before I move back out, outside the F-Type, I want to give my general impression of the interior a few thoughts. One is, it's still nice in here. Good materials feels very luxurious. Everything is nice and high quality. With that said, it is starting to get a little outdated in this interior. There are a few details that just aren't quite up to par anymore, especially at this price point. You have a lot of plastic buttons, for example, in the center console area. Same deal on the steering wheel. The buttons to control the gauge cluster are plastic, which definitely don't 
don't look as modern or as futuristic as the electronic buttons on Land Rover steering wheels, and I'm surprised they didn't just stick those in the Jaguar. And also the general design of this interior isn't quite as flowy and modern as some more recent sports cars. The overall design has stayed basically the same, even though Jaguar did put in the new gauge cluster and a new infotainment system, better technology, but basically the same look. So it stayed about the same since this car first came out. Still looks good, but not quite as modern, a little more outdated than some of its rivals. And next up, we move on to the trunk in the F-Type, which has kind of an odd design to it. Pop it open on the key, you open it up, and you can see all of this stuff stays put when the trunk is open. Only sort of the panel on top opens up. And that means you have a pretty big lip if you want to load anything in here. You don't just load it over the bumper. You have to get over the license plate and the tail lights, and it's a pretty high bar in case you're trying to load something very heavy into your F-Type which you're probably not. Now, when you get into the trunk, I have to say I love the graphic on the tire repair kit. It's this great cartoon graphic that shows a blown out tire and then it being refilled. Jaguar could put tire repair kit on there in English, but then they would have to translate that into every language and every market they sold this car. So they just use a picture instead. And frankly, that picture does a pretty good job of getting the point across of what that is. So I guess it works. And finally, the last item I want to discuss on the outside of the F-Type is the fact that it's pretty subtle out here about this being the high performance model. You have an R badge in the back that tells you it's the R. You also have an R badge up front and that's it. There's no more exterior badging letting you know that this is the best one. You don't even have crazy wheels with crazy brake calipers that are like orange or bright blue or something. You just have a fairly simple and subtle vehicle, even though you're getting the performance model. I personally like that, although it may turn off some people who buy this car who want everybody to know just how crazy their F-Type is. Then again, they rev the engine and people will figure it out pretty quickly. And one other notable item in the back of the F-Type is the reverse lights. Now, the F-Type has some very distinctive tail lights. They have this cool flowy design. They wrap around the side of the car, the back and the side, and they look really good, but they're all red. Jaguar obviously wanted that assembly to just be red because they felt it was better looking. The problem with that is then you can't have a place for the white reverse lights. So where are they back here? Well, you gotta look down. Next to the exhaust tips, you have these tiny white lights mounted sort of vertically. Those are your reverse lights hidden in the back of the F-Type so as not to sully the cool look of the tail lights. Kind of interesting. And so those are the quirks and features of the new 2021 Jaguar F-Type R. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the F-Type R. Gotta go windows up for sound. And speaking of sound, this car makes a pretty good one. When I showed you the exhaust note before, it won't rev over 4,000 when it stopped, but listen to this. <laughs> That's a sound. Oh yes. <laughs> All right, a couple things about this car. The complaint about the F-Type has always been, oh, it's great, but dynamically it's no 911. I don't agree with that. Let me tell you why. The 911 is an amazing car, it really is, but it has become so big and so touring car-like and so luxurious. I know that dynamically it's probably excellent still. I mean, I've driven it, it is excellent, but it's not, it, this car is more nimble, let's put it that way. This car just feels more nimble and more lithe. And I don't know that I would have said that about the F-Type when it first came out against the last 911, but the 911 just came, seems to get bigger and more luxurious and more expensive and more high tech with every redesign. And this car, you still get. 911 doesn't sound like that. This car, I just think it feels, to me, it feels more fun. It feels more muscle car -y. It feels more get the tail out at a stoplight. The 911 just feels more sanitized to me. With that said, there are some benefits to the 911, obviously. Porsche brand name is a big one. And I think the biggest thing Jag has had to overcome is not the capabilities of this car, which everyone agrees have always been fantastic. It's more the fact that, yeah, for that money though, I could have a, and you know, people who are spending 100 grand had 911s on their bedroom wall. Their friend has a 911. They've 
you know, wanted a 911 since their uncle had one, and it's just a hard sell to get them into this sort of cool new thing, Jaguar. But anybody willing to give it a shot will be really impressed. It really is a fun car. It's tossable, it's exciting, it's nice. Uh, frankly, I think my only drawback of the F-Type in last year was that it, it was old, it felt old. The gauge cluster, old school. The styling was starting to look old, the interior. They've remedied some of that, but not all. The gauge cluster's been changed, modern, full screen looks good. The styling, I think, looks great. It's a little bit more generic than it used to be, but it's also just more modern and more focused, and I think, overall, it was a positive. The only real drawback to me is the interior just isn't, it still feels a little old. Uh, like I mentioned, some old switches, old buttons, old layout. Um, but the car drives nice, it drives new, and it has the performance of an excellent modern car. And I think that's the real benefit uh, to me of the F-Type. Uh, it really, it's fast, and it's fun, and it's exciting, and it looks cool. And the drawback to a car at this level will always be it isn't the 911, the king of the segment. Just like the drawback to a 7 Series is always it's not an S-Class. If you're willing to look past it, I think you'll find a fantastic car, a fun one, an amazing sound, and of course a great top-down, thrilling driving experience if you get the convertible. Um, it's a good car, and it's just been refined to make it a little better uh, for 2021. A little bit better look, a little bit tech better technology, uh, and it's still a nice, excellent vehicle. And so that's the 2021 Jaguar F-Type R. This is an impressive car with impressive styling and impressive performance and an impressive engine note. No, it's no Porsche 911, which has been the F-Type's biggest hurdle since it first came out, but it is a worthy competitor with a big V8 and big performance. And now it's time to give the F-Type a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the F-Type is gorgeous, although its design is starting to get a little familiar. The new look helps, but it also seems a little more generic than before. Still, it looks great, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, and it gets a 9 out of 10. Handling is excellent, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Fun factor is also excellent, between the sharp handling, the acceleration, the top-down fun, and that exhaust note, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Cool factor is decent, about normal for cars like this, and it gets a 6 out of 10, for a total weekend score of 30 6 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The F-Type is fine and the new technology improved things a bit, but it's a little down on some of the latest stuff and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is decent for a car like this and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, the interior is nice, but there are a few drawbacks like I mentioned and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is normal for a two-seater and it gets a 2 out of 10. Finally, value, and this is a good one. Given the performance for the money, it's well-priced, though the Jaguar nameplate brings it down a notch in the sports car world versus Porsche or even BMW, and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 27 out of 50. Added up in the Doug score is 63 out of 100, which places the F-Type R here against some potential rivals. It trails the 911 and the Lexus LC, which are its closest competitors, though the F-Type equals or beats those cars in the weekend scores. The F-Type's real problem comes in the daily scores, where it doesn't have back seats and where it's a bit down on technology and material quality compared to rivals. Still, this is a fun car that offers impressive performance, a great sound, and good driving enjoyment in a world where the Porsche 911 just seems to be getting bigger and more luxurious. Ah!